Everything's bigger in America. We've got the biggest cars, the biggest houses, the biggest companies, the biggest food, and finally, the biggest people. America has now become the fattest nation in the world. Congratulations. Nearly 100 million Americans are today either overweight or obese. That's more than 60% of all U.S. adults. Since 1980, the total number of overweight and obese Americans has doubled with twice as many overweight children and three times as many overweight adolescents. The fattest state in America, Mississippi, where one in four people are obese. I grew up in West Virginia, currently the third fattest state in America. When I was growing up, my mother cooked dinner every single day. Almost all my memories of her are in the kitchen, and we never ate out, only on those few rare special occasions. Today, families do it all the time, and they're paying for it not only with their wallets, but with their waistlines. Obesity is now second only to smoking as a major cause of preventable death in America, with more than 400,000 deaths per year associated with related illnesses. In 2002, a few Americans got fed up with being overweight and did what we do best. They sued the bastards. Taking aim at the fast food companies and blaming them for their obesity and illnesses, a lawsuit was filed in New York on behalf of two teenage girls one who is 14 years old, 4 foot 10, and 170 pounds. The other, 19 years old, 5 foot 6, and 270 pounds. The unthinkable had suddenly become reality. People were suing the Golden Arches for selling them food that most of us know isn't good for you to begin with. Yet each day, one in four Americans visits a fast food restaurant. And this hunger for fast food isn't just in America. It's happening on a global basis. McDonald's alone operates more than 30,000 joints in over 100 countries on six continents and feeds more than 46 million people worldwide every day. That's more than the entire population of Spain. In the United States alone, McDonald's accounts for 43% of the total fast food market. They're everywhere. Walmarts, airports, rest stops, gas stations, train stations, shopping malls, department stores, amusement parks, even hospitals. That's right, hospitals. At least you're close when the coronary kicks in. Lawyers for McDonald's call the suits frivolous, stating that the dangers of its food are universally known and that these kids can't show that their weight problems and health woes were caused solely by their McDiets. The judge states, however, that if lawyers for the teens can show that McDonald's intends for people to eat its food for every meal of every day and that doing so would be unreasonably dangerous, they may be able to state a claim. Are the food companies solely to blame for this epidemic? Where does personal responsibility stop and corporate responsibility begin? Is fast food really that bad for you? I mean, what would happen if I ate nothing but McDonald's for 30 days straight? Would I suddenly be on the fast track to becoming an obese American? Would it be unreasonably dangerous? Let's find out. I'm ready. Supersize me.
I knew if I was going to do this, I would need some serious medical supervision. So I enlisted the help of not one, but three doctors. A cardiologist, a gastroenterologist, and a general practitioner. You feeling quite well today, yes? Quite well. In general, any fatigue or weight loss, weight gain, any change no, in your vision? No. no fever, no irate, no cough, no shortness of breath, no chest pain, no... Nausea, vomiting, heartburn. And no hospitalizations for illness? No. Do you take any medications of any sort? I don't. I've just been taking uh, vitamins. Okay. Any food allergies or anything? No. There's no heart disease or diabetes or blood pressure or cancer in the, in the, in the, in the immediate family? My grandfather's had a couple open heart surgeries. Mm -hmm. One out of four grandparents is dead. Yeah. Good genes. That's the important thing. Any alcohol use? Now, none. You don't smoke? I, I used to, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Any drug use at all? Not for a long time. Mm -hmm. Are you sexually active at present? Yes. Mm -hmm. a, a girlfriend? Yes. Is there anything I did, we didn't cover? Is there anything else you need to tell me? Yeah, I don't think so. Patient is embarking on a one-month McDonald's binge. Very good. You might have something called white coat syndrome, which is a 140 over about 95. 130 over 105. 120 over 80. That's what it is? Mm -hmm. Those other guys are stressing me out. You're much more relaxed. I I'm tend bad. to do that to my patients. See? Swallow, please. Mm -hmm. Those reflexes are perfect. That's good. Back out. Normal. Say, ah. So everything looks pretty normal here. Good. We'll skip checking for hernias. We're going to do a rectal exam. I like to be more thorough than that. And I like doctors to be thorough. You're going to go downstairs and get your bloods drawn. So the reason we have you fasting is the true cholesterol and glucose numbers fasting. So if you had, like, a bacon, egg, and cheese, your cholesterol would be way high. If you had, like, orange juice, your glucose would be really high. Three down. Your blood tests are, are excellent. OK, you're starting off with a cholesterol, total cholesterol of 168 which is less than 200, and it's really superb. Your blood level's fine. Your iron level is good as well. Mm -hmm. You have no evidence of diabetes. Your fasting blood sugar is very low. The other thing that we looked at were all your electrolytes in terms of your salts in your blood, your kidney function, your liver function. They were all perfect. Your triglycerides, which is your building blocks of fat, basically from what you acquire from eating fat, mm -hmm. is 43, which is low, which is good. Your general health, you know, you're, you're, is, is outstanding. Great. Your, your analysis is, is, is great. So you're starting off terrific. Um, I think the worst case scenario is that you increase your triglycerides and your cholesterol level. And if you have any um, heart disease in the family or any heart, under, under, underlying heart disease, you're putting your heart at risk. Uh, I expect to see an increase in your triglycerides. Uh, because that will uh, can be affected. You're at 87 now, and I think that will change. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only thing that will change. Uh, out, of, out of everything? Out of everything. I mean, you know, there might be some minor variations, but the body is extremely adaptable, and the kidneys will handle any extra salt that you're taking in, and your liver will be able to metabolize additional fats. Um, as far as you gaining weight, you probably will. As far as your cholesterol going up, it probably will. Uh, um, as far as you feeling miserable, maybe. I don't know. Uh, um, unless you start cheating and just, just order the salads. <laughs> I also went to a fancy New York wellness center to meet a registered dietitian who would help okay, track my progress. OK, let's start with getting your height and weight. Um, I'm six foot two. Mm -hmm. I weigh about 185. For your height, this is a healthy weight. I can tell you that right now. Um, your BMI, which is the body mass index, is within normal limits, which means you're not obese. You're actually at the, the correct weight. OK, so what I should do is I should keep a sort of a checklist of the things that I eat for mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Keep a food log. Your calorie needs are going to be averaging about 2,500 calories a day. As far as fat goes, for 2,500 calories, you're going to want about 80 grams of total fat in a day. The saturated fat, which is a component of total fat, you want to have less than 20 five grams a day. Don't try to overindulge too much. Yeah. Good luck, Morgan. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Hi there. Hi. I'm Eric Raleigh, Hi. our exercise physiologist. Great. The official weigh-in. 185 and a half. We'll go through the cardiovascular assessment, and then I'll be able to calculate how much oxygen your muscles can utilize. And that's also an indicator of the type of condition that your cardiovascular system is in. All right. 
good work. I'm gonna use these skin fold calipers to estimate your body density. You're 11% body fat, that's great. We're gonna measure your flexibility of your hamstrings, your hips, and your lower back. Good, good. Very nice, 38 centimeters was your best. This is a basic, you know, old school test for muscular strength and endurance. 36, good job. You're above average, above average fitness for your age group, definitely, okay. I'd say. Okay. Yeah, so you're at a good spot right now. More than 60% of Americans get no form of exercise. So for the next 30 days, neither will I. But I'll still have to walk. How much does the average American walk a day? Oh, you know, there's reason to believe we have these pedometers that we put on people, right. step counters. It's, you could very roughly estimate that about 2,000 steps, because 2,000 would make a mile. And we know that people that work in office settings, um, who drive a car to and from work, who take an elevator up to that office, may take as little as 2,500 or 3,000 steps in their entire day. If you wanted to feel physically like a lot of Americans do, then you'd kind of limit yourself to about 5,000 steps a day. Us New Yorkers, we walk everywhere. We walk to work, to the park, to the store. Most of us don't even own cars. The average New Yorker will walk four to five miles a day. A day, that's a lot of walking. I'll also have the blessing of being close to a food source almost everywhere I go. I walk past three golden arches just on my way to the office. Three, and just over a mile. There are more Mickey D's in Manhattan than anywhere else in the world. This tiny little island is less than 13 miles long by two miles wide, 22.4 square miles. And packed into that area are 83 McDonald's, nearly four per square mile. There are twice as many Mac Shacks as there are Burger Kings, and there are more McDonald's than KFC, Wendy's, Popeyes, and Taco Bell combined. That's a lot of burger. I know he's gonna do it for a month, but I think after a week he's gonna be really irritated. <laughs> I think it's going to affect our relationship. <laughs> you are a vegan chef. Yes, I'm a vegan chef. Oh, I just don't know if I can... Of course I will. I'll sit next to him while he eats McDonald's. Of course I will. I'm just going to be rolling my eyes the whole time. We have a vegetable tart and a quinoa and roasted veggie salad, artichokes and a simple green salad, all beautiful, organic, fresh vegetables that you're going to miss so much. What am I going to have that's organic? In, a, in the next month, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you're only going to have genetically modified potatoes. I'm going to eat as many vegetables as I can tonight. There's plenty here for you. That's really good. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Have they improved their cookies in the last 10 years? Because the last time I had them, they were like little hockey pucks. I don't know. We'll see. It's, uh, it's the first day, and uh, I'm on my way to breakfast. Could I get a, uh, uh, an Egg McMuffin extra value meal? every eight-year-old's dream right now that I'm getting ready to fulfill. I got my egg McMuffin. That's gonna be the first thing right there. This McDonald's delivers for free. All I did today was leave my apartment, walk down the stairs, and walk to the McDonald's. 1,272 steps. So we got to go to the corner and we got to get a cab. The cabs are going to add up in this thing. I can tell already. I got my scorecard. And in here, I had one Egg McMuffin. I had one sausage biscuit. Do you eat fast food? Once in a while. Yeah? Once in a while. How, how often? Uh, I'd say probably once every two weeks. Oh, three, four times a week, maybe? Uh, in France, yes. Yeah. But here, not. No. I don't like here. Yeah. It doesn't sound very um, clean. And uh, what's your favorite place? Uh, probably Wendy's. McDo. Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell. McDonald's is pretty close. Do you ever have a supersized Cokes? Uh, no. no. Uh, in France, uh, the, the small size here, it's a bigger size in France. Even the small size here, I can't drink. There are rules to what's going on here in this whole process. 
I will only supersize it if they ask me. And I can only eat things that are for sale over the counter at McDonald's, water included. If McDonald's doesn't sell it, I can't eat it. I have to have everything on the menu at least once over the next 30 days, and I have to have three squares a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No excuses. Oh, I love Big Macs. See, this, this is probably the first time in a long time that I've actually seen a Big Mac that looks like the picture. That actually almost looks like the picture. Look at that. Big Macs never look this good. You got to come to Chinatown for the good Big Macs. You've heard about all these people who are suing these fast food companies? Yes, yes, yeah. I've heard. Yeah. I think it's ridiculous, but it's, uh, it's uh, the American way to sue for uh, everything. I'd throw the lawsuit out if I was a judge. And like I was saying, if uh, these, these fast food places can put their signs up, if I can walk by them and just totally ignore them and say, I'm not hungry, I don't need this, they can do it too. We don't have to go there, you know, we don't have to shop with them. We can easily go in McDonald's and grab a salad, but we choose not to. Now, if the McDonald's refused them service, they'd be in court again saying, we were, we, we were refused service. So you can't win if you tried in this world. I think there's a lot of focus on the fast food companies because they are mentioned more than virtually all the other causes in most of the articles and books and studies about why it's a sudden epidemic. Again, it can't be the neighborhood restaurant. We've had neighborhood restaurants for hundreds of years. It can't be the foods we eat at home. We've been eating at home for hundreds of years. Something is very different. I think the figure is we eat out something like 40% of our meals. John Banzaff is currently spearheading the attacks against the food industry, advising many of the lawyers who are currently going through the process. People say he's crazy, but that's what they used to say about him when he first sued the tobacco companies until he won. I think in terms of responsibility, it's fair to point the big gun at McDonald's. McDonald's is one of the biggest, but more importantly, it is the one with far more than all the others, lures in young children. They have the playgrounds, the closed indoor playgrounds. Many, many places, there are no other playgrounds. You've got to take your kid there. So even at two and three and four, those kids are being lured into there. McDonald's is very heavy on birthday parties. They, of course, pioneered the Happy Meals. Now the Mighty Kids Meals also with those little gotta have them toys. So they get the kids in. And of course, the whole clown. McDonald's is the clown. A lot of those ads appeal primarily to kids. There's a cartoon uh, on TV which features them. So they, more than others, lure the kids in. And I think all of us are far more concerned about the kids. Another man who is worried about the kids is Samuel Hirsch. He represents the two girls who are suing McDonald's, with much advisement coming from Professor Banzaff. Why are you suing the fast food establishment? I mean, motives besides uh, monetary re uh, compensation? I mean, you want to hear a noble cause? Is that it? Um, I think that fast foods are a major contributor to this epidemic. In 2000, Dr. David Satcher became the first Surgeon General to draw attention to the obesity crisis, declaring it a national epidemic. Now, now remember, we're supersizing everything. Uh, you go to any place to buy, go to any fast food store, and they're trained to tell you to buy a bigger size. For five cents more, you can get the supersize. Federal government will define a piece of meat, three ounces of meat, as a sensible portion, and that looks like a deck of cards. Few people would be able to find this deck of cards if they were served a piece of meat, a steak, in a restaurant. It would probably be about four or five times the size. One typical bagel that one is eating that looks something like this is going to comprise five servings of bread. When fast food companies first opened, they generally introduced one size. For example, one size French fries when McDonald's first opened, called fries. That size fries is now called small, medium, large, and supersize. That original size is still here. It's got about 200 calories, but the supersize is going to pack in over 600 calories. When Burger King first opened, they had a 12-ounce small and a 16-ounce large. 
This 12 ounce is now kitty. The 16 ounce is now the small, the medium, the 32, and the 42. And this is across the board with all fast food places. Cars have introduced larger cup holders to accommodate those huge 7-Eleven double gulps, which are 64 ounces, a half gallon, and hold anywhere from six to 800 calories, depending on how much ice you put in. A half gallon of soda. A half gallon of soda for one person, 48 teaspoons of sugar. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, could I get the uh, double quarter pounder with cheese meal? Large or super size? I think I'm going to have to go super size. Look at that. Look at that Coke. It barely fits in there. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to. Look at that. Look at how big that thing is. Look how big that French fry is. That thing is like four feet tall. Double quarter pounder with cheese. More calories than anything. There it is. A little bit of heaven. Mmm. That's a lot of food, man. All right, you what? You get all that super size stuff? That stuff gets super size? Man, look at that. I just put a, but I'm just not even, I'm not even halfway done with those fries. I'm even halfway. Mm. <laughs> it's like a workout. See, now's the time of the meal when you start getting the McStomach ache. You start getting the McTummy, the Mc, you, get the, you get the McGurgles in there, you get the McBrick, and you get the McStomach ache. Right now, I got, I got some McGas that's rocking. My Sweat, arm. Are you sweating there? My arms, I feel like I got some McSweats going. My arms got the McTwitches going in here from all the sugar that's going in my body right now. I'm feeling a little bit crazy. Oh. Just give me a minute. I'm in pure McDonald <laughs> heaven. <laughs> this is going to be you, like, after every meal. Oh. I'm, I'm dying. Oh, God, that's so nasty. Oh, I'm about to make me puke. I believe we live in a toxic food and physical inactivity environment. That is, we live in an environment that almost guarantees that we become sick. Not 100% of people become sick, but the numbers of people who do are growing and growing and growing. I don't believe that toxic is too strong a word either, because this, the, an epidemic of obesity where 60% of the population is suffering and record numbers of children having this is a crisis by any standard. The toxic environment is constant access to cheap, fat-laden foods. It's gas stations that sell more candy and sodas than gas. It's a nation where there are more than 3 million soda vending machines. That's one for every 97 Americans. It's a world where people depend completely on their cars for transportation, and where walking has become such a chore that we rely on machines to do it for us. My stomach feels horrible this morning. It doesn't feel good at all. There we go. I'm getting this really weird feeling right in my midsection, like basically in my penis right now. It's just like this. It's really freaky. That is very odd. Yeah. It could be from the caffeine, but it's, I'm not, you know, I couldn't really pinpoint that 100%. You have a delivery from Mr. Morgan, 1339. 1339. I made it over the three-day hump. You know how when you 
You quit smoking? I don't know how many of you out there smoke cigarettes, but you should stop. I quit smoking. And there's the, it's the three-day hump. <laughs> the three day, it's the three-day hump <laughs> when you quit smoking cigarettes. If you can make it over those three days without smoking one cigarette, if you can make it past day one, day two, day three, you make it over the hump, you're fine. Same thing with this. I made it past day three. I'm all right. Left unabated, obesity would overtake smoking as a leading preventable cause of death in this country. I was at this meal, and it came up that one of the people was a smoker. And somebody else at the table started hectoring them about, what's the matter with you? Don't you know how bad it is for you? It'll do this, that, and the other thing to you, and you really should stop. And the smoker, rather than saying, fuck you, <laughs> which, you know, is like, mind your own business, which I think is the appropriate response, was abashed and, and, and defensive, and like, oh, I tried to quit, and yeah, I'm going to try again, and you're right, you're right, and so on. At that same table, there was a, a quite large woman. And I was wondering, what if this guy, instead of confronting the smoker, had said to the large woman, what's the matter with you, you fat pig? Don't you know how dangerous it is to be so overweight? Stop eating, for God's sake, and don't you dare get dessert, and what's the matter with you, right? Uh, same logic. I'd be hard-pressed to find a distinction between those two examples. OK, so one is now socially acceptable to Hector smokers, but the other one isn't quite yet. So the question is, at what point will it become acceptable to publicly hector fat people uh, in the way that, that, that smokers are publicly hectored? A secret study by one of the tobacco companies that had the ominous title of something like brand imprinting for later actuation in life. They would buy the, the little toy cigarettes, uh, and they'd start play smoking them at four or five or six, mm -hmm. wouldn't even notice the pack. I mean, if you asked them what pack it was, they wouldn't notice it. But the theory was that somewhere it's buried in here, and then when they get to the age where they're smoking, without even realizing it, they're going for that pack that they recognized because it had those nice feelings for them when they were little kids. In the same way here, yeah, they're, they're satisfied, it's nice, they remember the warm feelings of playing and getting the toy and being with mom and dad. And, it's going to carry through. That's why when I have kids, every time I drive by a fast food restaurant, I'm going to punch my kid in the face. <laughs> then he'll never, will never want to come. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. McDonald's will make you fat. They serve Big Macs. They serve quarter pounders. They will put pounds on you. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. One of the most disturbing things uh, to me is that in the last 20 to 25 years, we've actually seen a doubling of uh, overweight and obese children and adolescents. And this weight gain has been linked to countless health problems later in life, such as hypertension, coronary heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, sleep apnea, respiratory problems, endometrial, breast, prostate, and colon cancers, dyslipidemia, sciatic hepatitis, insulin resistance, asthma, hyperuricemia, reproductive hormone abnormalities, polycystic ovarian syndrome, impaired fertility, and adult onset diabetes. In fact, if current trends continue, one out of every three children born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes in their lifetime. At least 17 million Americans now have type 2 diabetes, and about one out of every 20 people. If the diabetes starts before the age of 15, you lose somewhere between 17 and 27 years of lifespan. According to the new research, the direct medical costs associated with diabetes have doubled. The direct medical costs have doubled in the past five years, from $44 billion in 1997 to $92 billion in 2002. 
and somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 percent of the uh, of the obese children have elevated uh, abnormal liver function tests uh, and we have now started a, a study where we're biopsying these children to see what their livers actually look like under the microscope, and half of them have evidence of scarring of the liver, fibrosis of the liver, the early stages of cirrhosis. So, so when these children end up being adults, uh, they're going to end up, if they don't change their, uh, their eating and, and exercise uh, habits, are going to end up with liver failure and, uh, and well, either transplant or death. Did you want lettuce and mayonnaise on all of them? I think it's very, very hard for overweight teenagers because you're always going to see the thin, pretty popular girls. And you can't help but look at them and think, I wish I was her, or I wish I could have that. And I mean, it, it's, it makes, it's depressing. It makes you feel like crap. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. And, and it, it, it's, of course it's hard being a teenager because you see all the girls in the Cosmo Girl or Teen People and they're all beautiful. And you think, aren't I supposed to look like that? And it, it's just not, it's not realistic. It's not a realistic way to live. So without further ado, let's welcome Jared Fogel. My, my big thing was never smoking, it was never drinking, obviously it wasn't doing drugs. My big vice was food. And before I knew it, I wound up weighing 425 pounds. I brought in a present for you. My old pants that are now made famous in all the Subway commercials. There you go, you're welcome. This is my daughter, Victoria. She's an eighth grade honor student, and you're a real inspiration to the kids. I well, really appreciate that. Really, that's one of the greatest. I mean, you know, as I said, when I, I started putting my weight on, as you guys know, you know, at third or fourth grade, so. And um, she, she was real tiny when she was littler. Sure. And it's been in our family. Um, in fact, I had a great grandfather that died and was buried in a piano box years and years ago. Yeah. So it, it's a history. In, Absolutely. And, Absolutely. So, and she's been trying to maintain her weight. And, and it's, it's, it's tough. Really it's always a challenge. I know. I mean, I know. And it's you know, as a kid, it's it's awfully hard these days. But, um, and and kids are not always kind. No, not at all. And I I know that firsthand. And it's uh, you know, the problem is the world's not going to change. You have to change. And I guess it's kind of cool to know somebody or be able to listen to somebody talk about actually being where I am right now. And it's kind of hard because I can't afford to like go there every single day and buy a sandwich like two times a day. And that's what he's talking about. Like, that's the only solution. Like, that's what he said that, like, worked the best. But I can't do that. And I've tried other ways. And it kind of hurt my body from doing other ways that I've tried to do. And it's kind of hard to, like, look at someone who said, hey, I've done it, so you can do it. But it's not that easy. I had been sick as a kid. And I grew up eating a lot of ice cream, more than you could believe. We had an ice cream cone-shaped swimming pool in our backyard. We had a commercial freezer with not only all 31 flavors in it, but all the experimental flavors that were under development. And I made myself the official taster. I had to prove everything you know, in my mind. And, and I, I mean, I loved it. What kid wouldn't? I mean, I literally had unlimited ice cream. I ate ice cream for breakfast. But I was sick a lot. And I wasn't very athletic. I didn't exercise. You know, I was really ill. And I didn't feel good. So I would kind of appease that by eating more ice cream. You can see how the vicious cycle would take place. One of the triggering factors for me was my uncle, Bert Baskin, my dad's partner and brother-in-law, co-founder of the company, died of a heart attack. I think he was 51. Now, my uncle weighed about 240 pounds. Heavy set fellow. And when he died, as a young man, I asked my dad, you, know, you think there could be a connection? between his fatal heart attack and the amount of ice cream he would eat? And my father said, no. His ticker just got tired and stopped working. By this time, he had manufactured and sold more ice cream than any human being that had ever lived on this planet. He didn't want to think that the product he was selling was hurting anybody, that it had contributed to the death of his brother-in-law and partner, and in many ways, best friend. I mean, no way. Ben Cohen, the van of Ben and Jerry's, uh, a couple years ago had a quintuple bypass procedure at the age of 49. 
My uncle Bert Baskin of Baskin Robbins dies at the age of 51 of a heart attack. My father, Irv Robbins, the other founder of the company, ended up with very serious diabetes. You can't deny these links. You just can't. Yeah, can I get the two cheeseburger meal? Okay, super size. Second time. Mmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Thank man. You. After five days on the McDonald's diet, what I did was I ran um, three days worth of food analysis. The needs for you to maintain weight at the 185 that you were at when you came in, 186 pounds, um, was approximately 2,500 calories, okay? okay? Right now you're getting about almost 5,000 calories a day, the average being 4,986. I would love for you to take a multivitamin. McDonald's doesn't sell multivitamins. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my new advice is just kind of minimize the meals. A nice substitute for the hot fudge sundae would be the yogurt. That is true. If you get the snack size, five ounces, if you get the regular size without granola, it contains nearly as many calories as a strawberry sundae. With granola, it has more calories than the hot fudge or caramel sundae. And if that doesn't make you think twice about the parfaits, then how about this? Hey, there's a big nappy hair in it. That's disgusting. I'm going to show you how we do it. You go like this. We go... Oh, look, it's long, dude. Did you see that? Oh, that's so gross. Only the finest at McDonald's. Here we are at 190. It was 186 last 192, week. 192, 193, 194. No. We have to stop everything. I don't believe it. 195 pounds. Wait. It can't be. No, we have to redo this. That's zero. That thing is zeroed. Second try. 88, 92, 94. You're gained actually about 5% of your body weight. Losing weight that fast and gaining weight that fast is not healthy. Do you eat fast food? Yes, I do. Yeah? Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it, sir. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love Listen. fast food. Yeah, how, how often do you guys eat it? Every week. Oh, maybe once or twice a week. Oh, I we finna, we finna go hit up McDonald's in a little while. At least <laughs> three times today. Because you know we ain't had no meal yet yeah, today, so. We just pointed to us, McDonald's. Uh, I get the number two, <laughs> the cheeseburger. Um, the two cheeseburger With meal. the supersized Coke and fries. You supersize it up. 30, put, make it bacon, 69 cents. That's what they say, make it bacon. Make it bacon, baby. How often do you think people should eat fast food? Uh, I don't know if they should eat it at all. I don't know if I should. I, I don't know about what they should do. Right. Oh, that's hey, baloney. That's it's what baloney. What they need to do is it's hit like baloney. 25 minutes on that treadmill, work out a little oh. something, do some push-ups. See, if you do it's push-ups baloney. and you eat, you'll keep your weight down. See, I got I keep my weight down and stuff. I hit them push-ups and that thing. It's keep baloney. Myself, keep myself cool. Who has time to do that? <laughs> we have to work. We have to take care of kids. We have to clean. See, so you exercise, you run after your kids. Yeah. <laughs> Jello, chicken with them. These are the first McNuggets I've had in this whole exciting tour of duty. Look at that. Glistening in the sun. Mmm. Boy, that is miserable. I'm not sure what portion of the chicken that's shaped like that. I'm guessing this is the foot on the chicken. <laughs> In the lawsuit against them, McDonald's stated in their own defense that it's a matter of common knowledge that any processing that its foods undergo serve to make them more harmful than unprocessed foods. Case in point, McNuggets. Originally created from old chickens that could no longer lay eggs, McNuggets are now made from chickens with unusually large breasts. They are stripped from the bone and ground up into a sort of chicken mash, which is then combined with all sorts of stabilizers and preservatives, pressed into familiar shapes, breaded, deep-fried, freeze-dried, and then shipped to a McDonald's near you. Judge Robert Sweet called them a McFrankenstein creation of various elements not utilized by the home cook. So for the past couple days, which I haven't shared with everybody, it's been a uh, it's been a new thing. Is I've started to have like little, some chest not chest pains, but like pressure. You know, I feel like I got pressure on my chest. So uh, I, I figure that's probably not a good thing. But <laughs> neither's eating all this. <laughs> so.
I tell you, I haven't smelled bad yet. Yeah, you have. No, I haven't. You just don't smell how bad you smell. <laughs> no. Look at that fish fillet. Look at this thing. Oh, God, that looks nasty, man. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? Obviously, that was been sitting around all day. That, the fillet of fish. Oh. Shit. Can I get the uh, double quarter pounder with cheese value meal? Okay, thank you. 486. I don't feel good today. Not that I feel sick, but um, I just feel really depressed. You know, for no reason. I mean, things are going great. We've had a good day. I just feel really. Yeah. It's not real hard eating this food all the time. Just because, you know, it tastes good, it makes you feel good. I've really noticed I'll eat some, and just a little while later, I'll be hungry again, and I'll want more, 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 more. So I'm pretty bored with their menu. It only took me nine days, but it's pretty good otherwise. Nine days. <laughs> Do that again. How many? <laughs> How many is the question? Yeah. No, that's, that is the question. We always ask how yeah. many, and he holds up how many fingers. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's always the how many. <laughs> yeah. It's just one, one just, for now. Yeah, just one? For now. As soon as I got my first car, this is the first place I came to. Uh, I bought three Big Macs, ate them out there, uh, enjoyed them so much, and I came back about 5 o'clock at night, bought three more, ate them out there, came back around 11 o'clock before they closed, and uh, ate three more. So the first day I came here, ate nine Big Macs, and it was like I couldn't get enough hamburger at that time, and, and Big Macs are so good. So I ate 265 in the first month. How many do you eat a day, usually? Usually it's two a day. OK, mm -hmm. now last year, I ate 741 last year, OK? Well, that's more than two a day, so that means there's days I ate three, but that's because they're getting smaller. It's probably 90% of my, my um, solid diet is probably a Big Macs. That parking spot, that's where I asked her if she wanted to get married. I mean, this place is special, a lot of reasons, you know? Yeah. I had one Whopper in my life, yeah. 1984. Guy gave me five bucks to eat a Whopper. So I went, I after I ate the Whopper, took my five bucks over to McDonald's, got some Big Macs. <laughs> I always make fun of people at work, you know, saying, oh, I'm gaining weight. I said, well, you should try the Gorski diet. And they said, oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't like that. Man, this is a perfect sandwich, you know? At least for me, it is. Mmm, there it is, bite number 19,000. Well, the wife says when she's got to put them in a blender, it ends. You know, that's what she told me. <laughs> Big Mac smoothies. Yeah. America's been McDonaldized, you know, it's been uh, uh, franchised out. It's, it's like one of those old uh, Flintstones cartoons where they just had something rolling around in the background. You kept seeing the same buildings go by. It's like Kmart, Walmart, McDonald's, Kmart, Walmart, Wendy's, Kmart. And it's just like you have no sense of where you're at anymore. Um, the way I look at it is like um, Cezanne was uh, inspired by the mountain he saw out his window. And when I look out my window, I see no mountains. I just see billboards and uh, advertisements. So, so I use that as my inspiration. The average American child sees 10,000 food advertisements per year on television. 95% of those are for sugared cereals, soft drinks, fast foods, or candy. A parent who eats every meal every day for the whole year with their child, and every meal gives a very compelling nutrition message and can bring in cartoon characters, and Michael Jordan, so instead of selling McDonald's, he sells oranges, and Britney Spears, instead of selling Pepsi, will, will sell radishes or, or lettuce or something. That parent will have 1,000 cracks at their child compared to 10,000 for the food industry. So it's not a fair fight. You know, by the time kids are able to speak, most of them can say McDonald's. I'm going to show you some pictures, and I want you to tell me who they are. OK. Who's that? You don't know? George Which... Washington. Yeah? Who is he? he? He was the fourth president who freed the slaves. And he could never tell a lie. Who's that? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I don't know. George W. Bush? Nope. That's a good guess, though. <laughs> Who is this? I don't know. Goldilocks? 
I forgot the name, but I, I think I know. Yeah? Where have you seen her? That picture is on the side. Wendy. Nice. Who's that? McDonald. Ronald McDonald. Who is it? McDonald. <laughs> what does he do? He was helping people at the cast register. He works at McDonald's. I love the pancakes and sausage. He brings every of um, his friends to McDonald's for a Happy Meal. Where have you seen him? On television, on the commercials. He's the character that made McDonald's. And he does a lot of funny stuff on TV. Companies spend billions making sure you know their product. In 2001, on direct media advertising, that's radio, television, and print, McDonald's spent $1.4 billion worldwide. On direct media advertising, Pepsi spent more than a billion dollars. To advertise its candy, Hershey Foods spent under a mere $200 million internationally. In its peak year, the five-a-day fruit and vegetable campaign's total advertising budget in all media was a lowly $2 million, 100 times less than just the direct media budget of one candy company. Think about the way food is marketed. T-shirts, coupons, toys for children, giveaways in fast food places, placemats. I mean, just all of the different ways in which food marketing is ubiquitous. The most heavily advertised foods are consumed the most. No surprise. Thank you. Come again. Welcome to McDonald's. Tomato, concentrate, distilled vinegar, high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup. That means sugar. I'll move over to my salad shaker. I feel a little sick to my stomach. This is the best part of the day, when I get to be fat on the bed with my quart of Coke. Mm -mm. People eat out a lot. And so if there aren't healthy foods available at restaurants and there isn't good nutrition information, it makes eating out difficult. McDonald's says nutrition information for all their products is available online. But according to the 2000 U.S. Census, more than half of all U.S. homes still don't have Internet access. So what are these people supposed to do? Go to the stores for nutrition information? Is that information even there? I went to find out. Do you guys have any of the nutrition fact sheets? Do you guys have one of those? Yeah. You know, the things that fold out and have the nutrition info in them? Yes. There aren't any over there. And, or would they be up front? Yeah, they should be. But they got lots of info about Dora the Explorer Live. That's cool. Thank you. But I mean, you don't have ones you can take with you. Do you guys have one on the wall? Because they only have it like the lines now. Like, before, they don't put it up there. Oh, they don't post those anymore? Why not? I don't know. Only half the McDonald's in Manhattan had the nutrition info posted on the wall. Some had the takeaway nutrition charts, and one in four had no information whatsoever. This nice manager brought me the nutrition wall chart from the basement. Oh, thank you very You don't have ones that I can take with me, like a takeaway? Uh, do you know when you'll have some of the paper ones again? John Banzaf and I looked all over this McDonald's in Washington for any nutritional information. And then we found it. Aha, oh, here we go. Behind here, you'd never see it. It's right back there. You can't argue that people should exercise personal responsibility and then not give them the information on which to base it. I got my chicken group. There's no chicken group. Oh, that's my cholesterol group. Protein. I got my protein group. Carbohydrates. I got my meat group. You got meat, meat, sugar, and fat. I officially had to loosen my belt the other day from... <laughs> I had to go a notch lower. One notch? One notch. Scary. I'm an old pro with this now. Right? You'll get sick of this too, though. <laughs> Girlfriend is be loving she you. She hates me. <laughs> all right, cool. Care, Thank you. Bye-bye. I averaged out all the calories for the last nine days, and you're eating, you're still eating over 200% of what your needs are. I suggest you cut out all the liquids that you're drinking from McDonald's, except for water. 
A lot of people who lose 10% of, if they're obese and they lose 10% of their body weight, it's, it's beneficial. It right. can be beneficial in terms of, you know, blood pressure and so on. Um, so gaining 10% of your body weight maybe could be equally non-beneficial. Here we go. Second way in. What do you think, Eric? 203? Uh, 203. 203? Yeah. I think you almost got 10% of your body weight gained. So you've pretty much gained 17 pounds in 12 days. It looks like You better it. slow down. I'm telling you, don't drink your calories. I told him no more shakes, no more Coke, no more double double burgers. Yeah. The staff here is calling you Burger Boy. It's starting to get dangerous now, man. <laughs> I'm getting nervous for you. The one place where the impact of our fast food world has become more and more evident is in our nation's schools. Can I get a shot of your lunch right there? You got, you got a cookie and some fries. You can have anything else? Nope. Ketchup. Uh, do you think, uh, judging by the, the food that's in there, on a whole, do you think the kids make healthy choices for lunch here? And we try to teach them to make the right choices in life. Yeah. You got two bags of rubbles, a pretzel, a Twitch bar, and a Gatorade. Laura, are you sharing that with me? So how many people actually just have fries for lunch a day? Um, a lot of them do get fries. A lot of them do have their lunches. Oh, they They'll do. They'll have a sandwich, oh, so it's like a and it's like a side dish. Gotcha. Yes. Can I get green fries, please? Is that your own lunch, too? Well, I'm getting milk. That's my, it's my calcium and vegetable. You don't think you should take away things like, like the, so I love like to tell you something, Swiss rolls. I used to eat packs of these all the time. By just offering these up in the lunch line, are, are we also, are we setting the kids up to make bad choices? No, I don't believe so, because a child, like, just like you saw the child, she's not going to solely eat just that. And a child isn't going to pick up two or three. But that's all she bought. Tubby. But it doesn't mean this is all she's going to eat. Right. You have to follow her back to her table and see. Well, we got to go find Lori, see if that's go. all she's going to eat. <laughs> This is where schools turn a blind eye. The student with the french fries probably brought a bag lunch with real food. The girl with the chips is probably sharing them with someone else. Out of sight, out of mind. No, we wanted to see. The question was, did you bring a brown bag with you? The whole lunch. I brought that. I brought this. Oh, you brought that. You brought a Coke. So you brought the Coke. Okay, so, it's all, so she brought a Coke and then the rest of the stuff. For one thing, we don't have soap in here. Right. We have Gatorade. Okay. But can't you eliminate real quick? But there's still, there's still 36 grams of sugar in there, which is as much as a Coke. You know, there's 36 grams of sugar in the cup of time lemonade, which is just as much as a soda. Granted, it's not caffeinated, but it's, it's still filled with sugar. Right. At that point, the question like that, we need to speak to Barbara Brown. Barbara Brown is the field representative for Sodexo, one of the countless lowest bidders that school districts have farmed out the feeding of your children to. Sodexo services more than 400 K-12 school districts nationwide every day, providing quality food like Little Debbie snack cakes, Gatorade, and candy bars to your children. They also operate prisons and feed thousands of inmates worldwide. Part of our position is that we're hoping that through nutrition education, the students will learn to make the right food choices without restricting uh, and what they can purchase. At this middle school in Beckley, West Virginia, the school lunches don't have the flair they do in Illinois. This school does not outsource their food service, but they are on the federal school lunch program, providing USDA reimbursable meals to the students, most of which are reheated, reconstituted packaged foods. Some days the amount of calories in each meal tops a thousand. So the USDA sends this food for you to prepare for kids. Right. Well, not all of it now. You've got Sloppy Joe, Barbecue sauce with pork from the government. Whatever happened to cooks actually cooking? I don't know what happened. Too many whiny people. Yeah? They don't want her to work hard. It's easy to come in here. This is the best tool we got right here. Box opener. That's your, that's your chef's tools, the that's box cutter. That's it. Open up a box. Serve it. Give it to me. Yeah. Let's look at the things that are actually cooked. Uh, okay. Here you go. Okay. Here's a menu. This day. Mashed potatoes. Ham. Chili. Chili. Be homemade. The chili will be homemade. And what about the tomato soup? Uh, Campbell's. Meatballs. Comes in. Comes in a box, heated up. Out of the course of an entire month, six out of 36. That's right. You're only cooking six out of 36 meals. Appleton Central Alternative High School is filled with students who have truancy and behavioral problems. But they've turned things around, not through discipline, but through diet. We were fortunate to uh, kind of stumble across this healthy, 
healthy program as a result of uh, some contact with Natural Oven and Bakery of Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And they uh, believe in low fat, low sugar, non-chemically processed foods that are free of dyes and preservatives, um, full of uh, whole grains, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we do no beef here at all. And then it's the method of preparation where we don't fry. Uh, we do a lot of baking and then just, just fresh preparation as opposed to opening cans or thawing things out from the box. We got rid of candy machines, soda machines, brought in bottled water, and it was just um, a situation where we saw a major change in the kids. You know, if you walk through these halls and you're here, these do not look like at-risk, out-of-control kids. The behaviors are better. Uh, they seem to be more focused. Uh, teachers will tell you that they get more out of them in the class. Keep in mind, this is not a private school. These are the quote-unquote troubled kids of the public school system in Appleton, Wisconsin that are eating so well. And it costs about the same as any other school lunch program. So my question is, why isn't everyone doing this? There's an awful lot of resistance from the junk food companies that, that make huge profits off the schools at the present time. They don't want to get kicked out of the school system. They want to be there to addict the children for life. The soft drink companies especially boast about how they're contributing to America's education. But in fact, what they're doing is they're draining money from the community whether, rather than contributing money to the community because the soft drink companies aren't pumping those dollars into the machines. It's the children in the community who are getting the money from their parents. And instead of that money going directly to education, the soft drink companies are taking a cut of it and you know walking away rich as a consequence. We just banned soda in our school district. And um, the sugar here shows you how much sugar um, a student will drink in a week of just soda. Um, forget about the rest of the food they eat. And some of these companies are really opposing the, um, the ban for reasons of that we would lose revenue. And it's not about money. It's not about economics. It's about health. Oh, the McDonald's Texas Homestyle Burger Meal. That's a, uh, that's a local specialty. So it's kind of like a Big and Tasty, but yes, only... Except the Big and Tasty comes with mayonnaise. Comes with mayonnaise? Oh, then you know what? I need the uh, McDonald's Texas Home Style Burger Meal, please. Would you like to supersize it today? Oh, yes, I would. Do a lot of people supersize it? Yes. Yeah, like say you ask five people. How many of those five do it? Actually, I get the look. I get mostly all of them. Oh, mostly all of them? So you just say you're batting about 100%. <laughs> She's that good. Deborah's that good. So first meal inside the restaurant that I went in to get, and they asked me to supersize it. We're going to keep a little tabs, see how many times they asked me to supersize it here in Texas. Because Texas, Texas out of the top 15 fattest cities in America, Texas has five. We are Houston, Texas, fattest city in America. Getting my first breakfast. When it comes to the topic of obesity, many people are quick to point the finger at various foods and food companies. But the Grocery Manufacturers of America, a Washington, D.C. based lobby group whose mission is to advance the interests of the food, beverage, and consumer products industry, are quick to shift the focus away from the companies they represent and to remind everyone that there's more at work here than just eating poorly. We believe very strongly in, in our industry and, and in other industries, I think you'll find there's a, there's a growing consensus that the solution lies in good education. We have to get good information to parents so that they can teach their children better exercise and nutrition habits and so that they can lead the healthy lifestyles. Uh, we don't teach uh, physical education in schools anymore. In the U.S., only one state requires mandatory physical education for grades K through 12. It's also one of the fattest, Illinois. You got to interfere sometimes with this. You got a heart rate? Phil Lawler is the phys ed teacher at Madison Junior High School, home of the Soaring Warhawks, the snack-ridden school lunches we saw earlier, and one of the most well-executed physical education programs in the country. Supported mostly by fundraising and parent involvement, Lawler has created a role model for instructors and school districts nationwide. When's the last time you've ever heard of a science class fundraising to get their labs? Eventually, society has to step up to the plate and say, 
this is important. We should have daily physical education and equip it properly. Well, we have to say our greatest strength is the resource of our young people. That's our future. Uh, and, and boy, if, 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 if the way we're treating our resources right now, we're, you know, we're running into some serious problems with that. See, I've always said we've never had health care in this country. We've only had sick care. I think daily physical education is the only place out there that's really offering a solution. When I start the music, you are going to begin traveling for general space. You will go back to your spot, and I will tell you a body shake. Watch out for other people. Round. Good job. How many days a week do the kids here at this school get to go to the gym? Once. One day a week? One day a week for 45 minutes. Is that enough? No. Nowhere close. Not when the Surgeon General recommends that at minimum you need 30 minutes of physical activity a day to maintain your weight and a healthy well-being. So once a week is nowhere close. In 2001, President Bush announced his presidency with sweeping education reform. The No Child Left Behind Act would now hold states accountable for not having students who met minimum education requirements. Apparently, we were not only the fattest nation in the world, but we were quickly becoming the stupidest. I mean, maybe sending a very difficult message for schools. I mean, one of the reasons recess is being cut back in elementary schools, as I said earlier, is that's being cut out so they can prepare for the tests. You know, and, and something I've said to a couple of groups, you know, it's very interesting. We could end up with youngsters who could read, but who are fat. So we have fat readers, quote unquote. As more and more we put mandates on the school to be very myopic in their focus, we mitigate against all of these other areas where they should be devoting time and energy, including phys ed, nutrition, health. These are all the things being cut out. Who in here can tell me what a calorie is? <laughs> oh, uh, so you know what? It's on the back of the food box. Uh, something you should watch? Blue. Something you should watch. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got that right. Is it uh, the fat that goes to do your own. What's a calorie? Oh, Jesus. A uh, calorie is an increment of, um... Ugh. Um, that's a good question. Most of us know what a calorie actually is. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait. Is a calorie some part of fat? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, it's something that builds up the fat in your body. <laughs> calories are not good. This amount of... See, I don't know. I want to see this amount of calories in a calorie. I don't know. You know? Yeah, I never pay no mind what calories are. I just eat when I'm hungry, and that's it. So if you can tell me what a calorie is, go ahead. Calorie is a measure of the energy content of food. And a calorie, the kind that you usually see when you see the caloric content on food labels, one calorie is the amount of energy that's needed to raise the temperature of a liter of water by one degree centigrade. Well said. Could I get a uh, bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle? Hmm. Oh, like a little pancake. Hmm. Tastes like a little pancake. <laughs> Look at that. I haven't walked a half mile a day since we've been here. No wonder everything's bigger in Texas. If you're inside, stay there. The blizzard of 2003 isn't over yet. I got my lunch. I got my dinner. Never have to leave the house. Right. I'm not going to completely become vegan. Just because you want me to. I'm not saying you should do it because I want you to. I'm saying that you need to think about what you believe is a system that is corrupt and right. immoral and wrong and hurtful, but you're going to be a part of it. Where is the disconnect there? Why don't you make that choice? Why don't I make the choice to not eat meat? Yes. Um, because you like it. Because I like because meat. Because it tastes good. I like bacon. I love pork chops. Ham is the greatest sure thing ever. I'm sure is awesome. I'm sure it's Heroin great. Heroin and ham are in completely different categories. I'm sorry, but ham and heroin are not the same thing. They're not. They're not. I could be strung out on ham for days and be okay. You are, though, strung out. And I am me. strung out on ham. It's hard for me to watch him go through this, I got to tell you. I worry about his health. He's exhausted by the end of the day just so tired, gets home really late from work, and, you know, he gets all jacked up on sugar and caffeine, and then he crashes, and then when we do have sex, I gotta tell you, 
He's not quite as energetic as he used to be. <laughs> I have to be on top. <laughs> Otherwise, he, uh, he, you know, he gets tired easily. <laughs> I think the saturated fats are starting to impede the blood flow to his penis and he's having a hard time, you know, getting it up. He does, totally. I mean, it's still good, but it's like definitely a big difference. There's definitely a difference. I can tell. Oh, I feel horrible today. My headache's coming back again. It feels like somebody's yanking on the tendons behind my eyes. My body officially hates me. All the vitamins that you see here, vitamin E, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and so on, are all under 50% of what you need. You're getting quite a lot of carbohydrates, and I know clearly that those are all refined carbohydrates because those are coming from the buns, biscuits, hash browns, okay? Right. And the sugar, I mean, let's not forget the most refined carbohydrate of all, which is coming from your milkshakes and your Coke. In fact, there are only seven items on the McDonald's menu that contain no sugar whatsoever. French fries, chicken McNuggets, hash browns, sausage, Diet Coke, coffee, and iced tea. Everything else, even the salads, contain sugar. I'm telling you. 202. Yeah, you lost I lost weight. a pound. Oh, thank God. Muscle weighs more than fat, so no, you might have lost some muscle mass and gained some fat mass. I lost a pound. Let's go get something to eat. I was feeling bad in the car, feeling like shit, really. I was feeling really, really sick and unhappy. Started eating. Feel great. Feel really good now. I feel so good, it's crazy. Isn't that right, baby? Yeah, you're crazy, all right. 150 over 90. Um, the headaches might even be hypertensive headaches, but they're probably not. They're probably uh, related to, you know, to blood sugar. You might be in this hyperinsulinemic state. 150 over 110. Your total cholesterol is 165 before. Now it's 225. A liver that's uh, that's inflamed in any way or sick in any way will, will, will leak some of its enzymes out uh, into the blood. So this, this is very nonspecific, but it means the liver, the liver is sick. Yeah. And the most likely cause of your liver sickness is a fatty liver. Uh, your liver is now like pate. SGOT was originally 21. Now it's 130. And SGPT was originally uh, 20. Was 20. Now it's 290. More than tenfold increase. That's not good. good. Not good. Not good. Not, not good. good. Anybody would 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 say right now that you're sick. You feel fatigued with us. You feel lethargic with us. You feel run down with us. You feel. If somebody were doing this to the level with alcohol. They could theoretically wipe out the liver, you know, wipe out all the liver cells and, 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 and there'd be in liver failure. Now, I've never heard of anybody doing this to the liver with, 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 a, with a high fat diet. But I guess anything's part of it. I don't know. I can't answer the question. Never, never been done before. No one's ever wiped out their liver with a high fat diet before. Wow. And I won't wipe out my liver in two more weeks. I would think it'd be unlikely. I don't want to tell you you wouldn't. I mean, my, 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 my advice to you is to, is to stop doing what you're doing because it's hurting you and you're sick. You're sick and you're making yourself sick and then you can make yourself unsick by stopping doing what you're doing. I'm just afraid there'll be something that's totally irreversible, you know, that there'll be some damage done that... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. So do they think that uh, once you change your habits, that's going to correct itself? Yeah, they think that um, everything should get back on track once this is done. You know, your, your liver, you know, and I've even been doing some reading, your liver is very resilient and your liver heals itself. So. Well, if you need, if, if you need a portion of my liver, honey, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that part of my liver for you. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks.
There's a drug that is used in emergency rooms called naloxone. It's used for heroin overdose. And a guy comes in, overdose on heroin, comatose, he's going to die. You inject him with this drug, and it blocks the opiate receptors in the brain. Heroin doesn't work, he wakes up. If I give that same drug to a real chocolate addict, a person just shoveling it in, you find the most amazing thing. They lose much of their interest in chocolate. They take a bite, they set it back down. In other words, it's not taste and mouthfeel. It's a drug effect of the food within the brain that keeps us coming back again and again. But it's interesting you're saying that your mood goes up once you start eating. Well, yeah, lately, every time I eat, I feel 100% better. Huh, so it seems like you're starting to get addicted to it now. calls people who eat their food at least once a week heavy users. I'm not kidding. 72% of the people who eat at McDonald's are heavy users. They also have another category, the super heavy user. These people eat their food three, four, five times a week and up. 22% of the people who eat at McDonald's are super heavy users. If you look at the menu at a fast food restaurant, they use all of the addicting components. They'll take a slab of meat, cover it with cheese, Cheese, of course, which is filled with the casomorphins, uh, the opiates that are, that are found in the cheese protein. And then they serve it with a sugary soda, which has the addictive powers of sugar, with plenty of added caffeine. Now, you might be a 12-year-old kid. Your brain is no match for that combination. In 2002, McDonald's France took out a full-page ad in a French magazine in which a nutritionist stated, there is no reason to go to McDonald's more than once a week. McDonald's corporate headquarters in the U.S. freaked out, saying that this is only one opinion and that the vast majority of nutrition professionals say that McDonald's food can be a part of a healthy diet. So we thought we'd randomly call some nutritionists to see what their opinions were when it came to eating fast food. How often do you think that people should eat fast food? Ideally, never. Rare to never. The less the better, zero is the best. And hopefully no more, no more often than once a month. <laughs> if you are stranded uh, on a deserted island or if we get bombed with anthrax and that's the only food available, that's the only time you should eat fast food. We called 100 nutritionists all over America and the results were not on track with the vast majority McDonald's talked about. Only two out of the 100 said you should eat fast food two times a week or more. 28 said once a week to once or twice a month. And 45 said you should never eat it. 95 of them agreed that it is a major contributor to the obesity epidemic sweeping America. Okay. 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 Hi, Morgan. How are you? Chris okay. Bennett from Health. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that Health is going to have to close its doors effective immediately. I'm sorry to have to tell you that over the phone. We're all sort of surprised, but... Um, we will proceed as before, just not at the, the Integrative health, health Center. Okay, Morgan, thanks, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Apparently, we don't put much value on health in America anymore. In fact, each year we spend over $30 billion on diet products and weight loss programs. Two and a half times what we spend on fitness and health. There are pills, drinks, bars. You can lose weight while you sleep, while you watch TV, and while eating everything you want always pushing the newest way to stay thin without exercise. Some people, however, feel that they have tried everything and see only one remaining option as their last hope for health. I'm diabetic. 80% of people don't have to take insulin anymore after this. Mm -hmm. Plus, I have hypertension. Hopefully correct that, lose my weight and lose my high blood pressure. Yeah. This is Bruce Howlett. In a few minutes, his stomach will be surgically reduced to the size of a small apple in a gastric bypass operation. People with hypertension who are obese, about 75% of them will get rid of their hypertensive medications. Doctors Adam Naiman and Carl Geisler will be performing the operation. Together they have done more than 500 gastric bypass surgeries, and with their tandem technique, they are setting the industry standard completing the procedure in less than 30 minutes and sending patients home the following day. 
Uh, we have established now that the only procedure that really cures diabetes is obesity surgery. Went blind for a week. Just went completely, just one day out of the blue, you went blind. I went to work, um, got to work, drove to work that night, got to work there, couldn't read the charts, and I had to call my supervisor, tell her I couldn't work because I couldn't see what I was doing, and I called my wife, had her get a ride to work to pick me up and take me home. And then once I stopped drinking the um, diet soda water and stuff, got my sugars back down, my, I was fortunate enough, my eyesight came back, I didn't do that much damage to them at that time. I, I think it's human nature to seek a drastic solution only when you're faced with a drastic problem. Well, I drank three or four of those a day. Three or four, because this, this is a half gallon. So that means you were drinking probably about two gallons, uh, two gallons of soda a day. It wasn't unusual for a two-week time. We'd buy like 52 liters of soda water. 50, 52 liters every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I probably end up having to pick him up a couple extra. He drinks more than I do. Yeah. I'll go through about one of those a day. Yeah. Uh, There's some days I go through three or four, two liters. A lot of us don't realize the uh, social stigma that these people face on a, on a daily basis. <laughs> Your EKG is normal. Deep breath. And out. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now, listen, um, I, don't, I don't have a ready explanation for your chest pain. Okay. Um, would you at least consider taking aspirin once a day now that you're on this ridiculous diet? Uh, uh, maybe. I'll think about it. Why would you even think about it? Why wouldn't you just do it? This is really, you know, you, you, know, you saw these numbers, right? These numbers are absolutely Outrageous. Okay, for the first time we're seeing uric acid elevated, so you're giving yourself hyperuricemia, and the danger of hyperuricemia is gout, kidney stones. The results for your liver are uh, obscene beyond anything I would have I would have thought. Yeah, truly. I, I mean, uh, you know that, that movie uh, Death in Las Vegas, Nicolas Cage. I mean, that pickled his liver during the course of a few weeks in Las Vegas, right? right. This is, this is, this is, I, would, I would never have thought that you could do the same thing with a high-fat diet. Yeah. Uh, my advice to you as a physician is that you've got to stop. You're pickling your liver. Yeah. You're, you know, and you're kicking it while it's down now. You know, now it's down and you're, gonna, you're, you're kicking it further. I mean, you, if you're an alcoholic, I'd say, you, you stop, you, you, I'd say, you're going to die. You keep drinking, you'll die. If the pain starts to radiate to your jaw or down your arm, 
that's life threatening and immediately so. Yeah. So I need to hear about that or you need to call 911. Okay. All right. Hello. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm good. I'm worried about you. Yeah. I had no idea this was going to be such a dangerous experiment. Yeah. I don't think uh, anybody did. You know, the doctor didn't even think it was going to be this drastic. He's floored by it. Yeah. And um, he doesn't know what will happen. You know, he says, he goes, listen, I have no idea. But, um, you know, he said that if I am feeling bad or feeling anything for to page him and he'll admit me immediately wherever I am. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah. I love you so much and I don't want you to be hurt. Yeah, me either. Me either. So I'll tell you, if you start to get nauseous, you start vomiting, your eyes turn yellow, you have got to go to the emergency room, no okay. matter where you are. Okay. Um, if you're, you know, again, if you're not keeping food down or anything, you're feeling sick to your stomach, you know, it looks like, you know, your liver function tests are getting worse. My um, suggestion would be to, uh, to stop the diet. Okay. And, uh, you know, go back to eating lower fat diet, you know, rechecking the blood test in a couple of weeks. Nobody needs to be partisan about this issue. We need fixes, we need remedies, we need support. And How much influence on government legislators uh, does the food industry have? Well, the food industry is an enormous business in the United States. Therefore, it employs very expensive and well-paid lobbyists. And those lobbyists are in Washington for two purposes. Number one, to make sure that no government agency ever says, eat less of the company's products. Number two, that the government never passes legislation that is unfavorable. And I guess the third one is to encourage the government to pass favorable legislation. The GMA is one of those lobbies. You're going to see us do what we do best, and that is market appropriately, uh, uh, finance uh, education programs, as we're doing in a, in a great abundance, getting good information out to parents so we can solve the problem. That's what we do in the food industry. We are, we are, that, we think that that is a responsible, important role to play. We are not police, we are not regulators. We provide a, a safe, affordable abundance of food like the world has never seen. The food industry and the broadcasters are extremely powerful lobbies and they outgun us. The industry has stepped up to the plate. We're gonna do more, we want to do more. We recognize we have a role to play. We're part of the solution, we're part of the problem. And we are so also are part of the uh, part of the solution. Did everyone hear what he just said? We're part of the problem. The lobbyists for Coke, Heinz, Smuckers, Kellogg's, Nestle, Kraft, Hershey, Sara Lee, Cadbury, General Mills, Seagram, Welch's, Wise, Anheuser Busch, Birdseye, Lance, Campbell's, Carvel, Mars, Ocean Spray, Hormel, Dannon, and Pepsi said we're part of the problem. I think we're making some headway. Uh, yeah, I wanted to speak to somebody about scheduling an interview with uh, Jim Canalupo. I can take the information, have somebody get back to you. Good morning, media line. Uh, good morning. I wanted to speak to someone about uh, scheduling an interview. Uh, I can take the information, have somebody get back to you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> One more time. Yeah, what'd you do? <laughs> I said it. What were you doing? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation. <laughs> and to the Republic. Oh, no. For which it stands. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. <laughs> Liberty. <laughs> liberty. Liberty. And liberty. For all. The liberty. I'm say so sorry. It. Do you want us to keep walking? What's the Big Mac slogan? You know, to all beef oh, patties. Special oh, yeah. sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Yeah, you know that. You know that. That is you know a shame. That is a shame. Welcome to my 
McDonald's. We're glad you're here. I hope you got fat. <laughs> I hope you got really fat. Cause if you got really, really fat, you just might want to see me come back. I hope you got fat. Can I get a, uh, a large vanilla shake, please? I'm sorry, sir. We don't have any shake right now. No shakes? No. What, when will you have shakes, you think? I guess that's never. At the end of this month, I'll have eaten as much McDonald's as most nutritionists say you're supposed to eat in eight years. Uh, yes, Sheila, it's Morgan Spurlock calling. I'm trying to reach Lisa Howard. Okay, Morgan, I will let her know. Hi, this is Lisa Howard. I'm not able to take your call right now. If you leave me a message, I'll get back to you as soon as... Hey, Lisa, it's Morgan Spurlock calling, and I just wanted to follow up on the email that I sent to you. close to the end of the day, and I didn't know when she was going to be taking off. Sure, I'll put another message on her desk. Lisa Howard. Hi, Lisa. It's Morgan Spurlock calling. Hi, Morgan. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm okay. Good. So you got my email? Yes, I got your email. Okay. And, and I'm circulating it around. Okay. Um, I don't have an answer for you. Any idea when you think uh, you might? Probably in the next day or two. Oh, man. Walking up the stairs has gotten... It's starting to get really difficult. By the time I get to the top... It's really pathetic. Oh, man. I've got Morgan's detox diet all ready to go. The biggest thing is taking the crap out and putting good stuff in. Really focusing on nutrient-dense food. Organic, seasonal, fresh food. Uh, making sure that I'm getting as much, as many cleansing vegetables into his diet as possible. Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy, and I feel like I'm loving you. Let's see here. Let's see. Love you such a sweet thing, there's enough to eat. I can't believe that tomorrow I'm going to get up and not have to go eat McDonald's. That's it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just keeps getting just bigger. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. 210 pounds. I'm going to say 210, right on the money. We went from 185.5 to 194. A week later to 203, then down to 202, and now 8 pounds during the last week for a 210 total. I think we know the damage that can be done. Uh, Lisa Howard, it's Morgan Spurlock calling. I don't know to how many times we've called her now, but this has got to be her 15th time. Lisa Howard, Morgan Spurlock calling from New York. Please call me when you get this message. We'd still like to schedule an interview with someone from McDonald's. Uh, please call me uh, when you get this, and let's talk about uh, what's possible. You're not talk to anybody, and you'll like it that way. After six months of deliberation, Judge Robert Sweet dismissed the lawsuit against McDonald's. The big reason? The two girls failed to show that eating McDonald's food was what caused their injuries. Interesting. 
and only 30 days of eating nothing but McDonald's, I gained 24 and a half pounds. My liver turned to fat, and my cholesterol shot up 65 points. My body fat percentage went from 11 to 18 percent, still below the national average of 22 percent for men and 30 percent for women. I nearly doubled my risk of coronary heart disease, making myself twice as likely to have heart failure. I felt depressed and exhausted most of the time, my mood swung on a dime, and my sex life was non-existent. I craved this food more and more when I ate it, and got massive headaches when I didn't. In my final blood test, many of my body functions showed signs of improvement, but the doctors were less than optimistic. I would very, very much doubt that these numbers would return to normal. Although it did drop, it was a small drop. If you kept on the diet indefinitely, um, I, I know that you probably develop coronary artery disease. Inflammation and um, hardening of the liver. Should people eat fast food? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, this, uh, the answer is no. It certainly needs to be very restricted and balanced with overall a healthy diet and overall a lot of exercise. And there's no reason whatsoever why fast food has to be so disgusting. Uh, the food, fast food can be nutritious. It's a cheap form of food, and it, it does keep you full for a while, so you get your money's worth. But unfortunately, you cause some major harm to your heart, your liver, your blood. I wouldn't suggest you continue the diet for a year to, to check this out. I don't think it's appropriate or healthy, especially with what showed up with your liver. For a year? Right. So I shouldn't eat this food for a year? No, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, we see people who like, go on an alcohol binge, and their numbers go up like crazy. But to go on, you know, a Mac attack, and they've got numbers to show that you're, you know, tax your liver too. I would never, honestly, I would never, I wouldn't have even thought about this, but it, it, it makes sense. Now that we have the data, it definitely makes sense. Still, the impact of this initial lawsuit is being seen far and wide. School districts in New York, Texas, and San Francisco have banned sugary soft drinks in schools, and all natural healthy options are popping up everywhere. McDonald's joined right in, sponsoring events that showed how health conscious they'd become and creating a new line of premium salads. At the same time, however, they also masterminded one of their fattest sandwiches to date, the McGriddle, a pancake-wrapped creation that won my heart in Texas, but can pack as much fat as a Big Mac and have more sugar than a pack of McDonald Land cookies. In fact, their new premium ranch chicken salad with dressing delivers more calories than a Big Mac and 51 grams of fat. 79% of your daily fat intake. Over the course of my McDiet, I consumed 30 pounds of sugar from their food. That's a pound a day. On top of that, I also took in 12 pounds of fat. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying nobody's supposed to eat this food three times a day. No wonder all this stuff happened to you. But the scary part is, there are people who eat this food regularly. Some people even eat it every day. So while my experiment may have been a little extreme, it's not that crazy. But here is a crazy idea. Why not do away with your supersize options? Who needs 42 ounces of Coke, a half pound of fries? And why not give me a choice besides French fries or French fries? That would be a great start. But why should these companies want to change? Their loyalty isn't to you, it's to the stockholders. The bottom line, they're a business, no matter what they say. And by selling you unhealthy food, they make millions. And no company wants to stop doing that. If this ever-growing paradigm is going to shift, it's up to you. But if you decide to keep living this way, go ahead. Over time, you may find yourself getting as sick as I did. And you may wind up here. Or here. I guess the big question is, who do you want to see go first? You or them? Right now, you have the urge to eat something. When it's through, if you still want to eat, then you're probably really hungry. Think about what I'm saying. F-A-T, that is me, but I didn't used to be. I was hot, I was hungry, I was loose, I was free. Then I waited in the line for some burgers and some fries. Super size, that'd be nice. Take a bite and close your eyes. Round two, what do I do? I can barely walk around. Jenny Craig, Richard Simmons, but I still love to pound. Hamburgers, Coca-Cola, getting gas from too much soda. Double, double, chunky, chunky. Hope this meal is never over. The world is round, and so am I. 
I? Big boys, big girls with real big thighs. Super size, super size, the American way. Throw it down, throw it down all day, every day. Super size, super size, the American way. Getting fat, getting broke, either way you're gonna pay. Super size me. Super size me. Super size me. Super size me. Now I can't get out of bed, so I have to order in. I'm a triple fat fatty and I have a triple chin. Who's to blame? Call the lawyer, try to settle out of court. Get some cash, spend it fast, cause I'm staring at my fork. Cause it's sad and it's lonely. Ham and cheese with bologna. Large pie stuffed crust, a doggy bag is for a phony. I have lost the motivation to inhibit the sensation. Bottle up the frustration. Birthday cake, I stick my face in. Turkey club with double bacon, it's got healthy Connotations, fast food is overtaken and it supersized the nation. Super size, super size, the American way. Throw it down, throw it down all day, every day. Super size, super size, the American way. Getting fat, getting broke, either way you're gonna pay. Super size me. Super size me. Super size me. Supersize me. If I can keep up this progress, I'll have 25 pounds. 25 pounds. That's a lot of weight. Kentucky fried just right. Chicken nugget, dip it twice. Biggie fries, enchilada, Philly cheese. Drive through diet, pack on weight. Cardiac, heart attack, back on track. Still so fat, slim, fast, slim, slow. Touch your toes, finger licking. Hit the border, pull right up and place your order. It's your way, right away. You deserve a break today. Super size, super size, the American way. Throw it down, throw it down all day, every day. Super size, super size. The American way Getting fat, getting broke Either way you're gonna pay Supersize me Supersize me Put something in your mouth Supersize me Can I get extra cheese with that? Supersize me What do you mean 50 cents for extra cheese? Supersize me I come here all the time Hook a brother up Supersize me Ooh, a buffet Supersize me All you can eat all day Supersize me Is that the biggest size you got? Supersize me I said I wanted supersize Supersize me Can I get like a bucket with a handle? Supersize me Two for a dollar? I'll take it Supersize me All I need is three more forks Supersize me And another set of hands Supersize me That's a pretty good idea Wait, the sign, the sign said free refills. Free